Frank Herbert's seminal classic has captured the fantasies of fans for several decades now, and the newly released movie adds further depth to the depths of the Dune universe. Dune Part 2 takes you on an epic journey as Paul Atreides and his mother Lady Jessica set off to redeem the lost glory of their family. The mother-son duo team up with the Fremen in the desert of Arrakis, and the narrative takes a decisive turn following Lady Jessica consuming the Water of Life, a mysterious blue potion that can be poisonous and a rare gift at the same time. In this video, we'll bring you everything there is to know about this Water of Life and its implications on the storytelling. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is the Water of Life and how is it obtained? The Water of Life is a poisonous blue liquid, which is used by the Bene Gesserit to turn their sisters into Reverend Mothers. This lethal substance could instantly kill someone who wasn't trained enough, but if ingested successfully, the Water of Life functions as an awareness spectrum narcotic, which could provide the individual with an abundant access to the genetic memory of her ancestors. Usually, a woman would be chosen from the tribe to take up the challenge, and this was done at a time when Asayadina, a lower-ranked priestess, who hadn't yet become the Reverend Mother, neared her death. This unique potion is only available on Arrakis, and is not found naturally. It's composed of a young sandworm's bile. It is drowned in order to extract its bile, and as the sandworm suffocates, it emits a toxic substance as part of its dying gasp. This fluid is collected by the Fremen, and used for its ability to provide a capable Bene Gesserit sister with heightened powers. This liquid is fed to a sister after she has spent years in training and mastering body control. This would enable her to alter her metabolism and slow down her heart rate to neutralize the effect of the poisonous liquid. The subject would briefly slip into a coma-like state, while the toxic elements of the liquid are converted on a molecular level. It marks a make-or-break event for the Bene Gesserit sister, because she would either die during the process or emerge as a survivor, who now has amplified awareness and memories. After a successful completion of the process, the new Reverend Mother would regurgitate the converted sandworm bile, and it would be consumed by the members of the CH, or a local community. The inhibitions would be lowered following the consumption, and CH members even took part in spice orgies afterwards. This unites the tribe further, and it is cathartic release that cannot be ignored. This new regurgitated mixture is actually referred to as the Water of Life by the Fremen. Why is the Water of Life ritual essential for the Fremen? All this trouble for the Water of Life is actually a necessary evil for the Fremen, and it is extremely important for every Fremen community. All these communities have a Reverend Mother, and she carries the genetic memory of generations before her, which is used to guide the members of the tribe. The entire Water Life ritual marks a transition from one Reverend Mother to another, so that the memories are always preserved successfully. Could men consume the Water of Life? Traditionally, the Water of Life has always been consumed by women, trained in Prana Bindu, or the expertise in body control. Men who consumed the liquid died, but the Bene Gesserit plans included a breeding program that would eventually result in a capable male Bene Gesserit, who would imbibe the Water of Life without its fatality. This man would be the Kwisatz Haderach, who would have access to the memories of both his male and female ancestors. As it turned out, Paul, the son of Lady Jessica, was the Kwisatz Haderach. However, whether or not the Water of Life was a gift or a curse for Paul and his son Leto is another debate altogether, because it caused them a lot of mental agony, as they felt trapped by their own destinies. Why the Water of Life is so crucial in Dune's water building? How does it impact Dune 2? Those who are familiar with Frank Herbert's novels will know that the Water of Life has been used very carefully by the writer. It doesn't find mention in the first half of the book, and when it's finally introduced, it immediately changes the course of the story. This fascinating element gets further acknowledgement when Paul chooses to imbibe the Water of Life and emerges alive. In Dune Part 2, the Water of Life plays a very important role in determining the narrative. Lady Jessica is offered a choice between death and surviving the Water of Life, and she chooses the latter, thus becoming a Reverend Mother. However, everything was done in such a hurry that the Fremen failed to notice that Lady Jessica was already pregnant. After surviving the Water of Life, not only does she gain heightened awareness and memories, but so does her unborn daughter, Aaliyah, in the womb. Lady Jessica heads to the south to propagate more on the Fremen prophecy of the Messiah, and to learn more about the Water of Life and its extraction process. 
Aaliyah Atreides continues to guide and influence her decisions and actions ever since she gained consciousness in the womb, and it can be said with certainty that she will go on to have a major role in the upcoming events of the franchise. Later, Paul Atreides also ingests the fluid and survives its impact. He gains both male and female genetic memories of his ancestors, and this empowers him to transcend both time and space. He's able to witness the apocalyptic future, and the entire process completes the whole Fremen prophecy and the belief system of his tribe about Paul being their messiah. After drinking the water of life, his visions become crystal clear and he watches a grown-up version of his sister Aaliyah. He also had a vision about his climactic duel with Vaid Ratha Harkonnen, which we later learn teaches him how to win the fight. Perhaps one of the most important after-effects of the Water of Life comes toward the end of Dune 2, when it's revealed that Jessica is the daughter of Baron Harkonnen and Paul is his grandson. This is simply a part of the elaborate Bene Gesserit plan to produce the Kwisatz Haderach by connecting Jessica with the Harkonnen bloodline. This also explains why Paul survived the Water of Life, which no man does, and also makes it clear that Paul is a Bene Gesserit. Marvelous Verdict Denis Villeneuve's twist to the Water of Life adds to the mystery of the movie. It's been established in the 2021 Dune movie that the makers weren't going for a word-by-word -word adaptation of the novels. Dune Part 2 follows in a similar direction, and the director, Denis Villeneuve, has taken a few creative liberties to alter a few things in the narrative. However, he did not change much regarding the water of life and Paul consuming the liquid, apart from the timeline alteration. This works wonders because a lot can be compressed in the brief storytelling of the movie, and it also paves the way for a great role for Aaliyah Atreides in the future. The narrative of the movie also changes Paul's reason behind drinking the water of life. In the book, Paul consumes the liquid after an attack on Lady Jessica. This near-death experience of his mother forces him to consider the water of life in order to see into the future and fight the Harkonnens better. In Dune 2, Paul drinks the water of life to see the right path for him to take, after some disturbing visions of Chani and other Fremen dying. The slight changes don't affect the narrative, and in fact, they enrich the lore further, with a curious build-up for a much-anticipated sequel to Dune Part 2. Don't forget to let us know about your thoughts on Dune 2, and also, tell us what you think could be the effect of the water of life on Paul in the future additions to the franchise. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe! Thanks everyone!